I have a 10 year old daughter named Ariel. She has been a competitive swimmer for about two years. She recently came down with swimmer's ear and uh, it's never happened to her before. She's been complaining about uh, pain, tenderness in her lower ear right here. It's a difficult situation for us because she still has to swim. She swims six days a week. We've been trying to figure out how to cure it, prevent it, and make sure that it doesn't happen again. Well, Fiona joins us with her daughter, Ariel. Welcome to both of you. Still hurting yeah. a little bit? Yeah. Let's talk about what swimmer's ear is in the first place. It's something called otitis externa, which basically means an external ear infection. And that's different than your typical ear infection, which is usually called a middle ear infection. Your middle ear, when, you know, when a child has your typical ear infection, it's in here. It's inside the eardrum. And a swimmer's ear has to do with the, the skin of the ear canal, this external ear canal here. What happens is that skin, like any other skin on your body, if it gets wet and stays wet, it gets really kind of soft and pliable, right? And then bacteria can get in there and can get very irritated and red and swollen and it hurts. It cause an infection. And when you come see the doctor, usually the first mm -hmm. thing we ask is, have you been Q-tipping your mm. ear or putting something else in yeah. that ear canal? Because typically, as Dr. Sears <clears> said, <throat> that skin already is softened up from, from mm -hmm. being moist. And then if you break the skin, yep. so it here. allows that the bacteria and the fungus to get seeded. The very first treatment, before anything else, is stay out of the water. <laughs> stay out of the water. That's, it, you you're gonna have to do that. If you keep going back bit. into the water, it's mm -hmm. not going to get better, and yeah. that's just the sad reality. Right. Of that's why they call it. Swimmers. Yeah, exactly. and it's the same with shampooing your hair too. Look for it. If if it hurts to wiggle your ear or wiggle that little piece right there, <laughs> the tragus. Ow, ow, ow. That's a big clue that it's swimmer's ear and not your typical middle ear infection. Treatments for this. If you're in my office and it looks pretty bad, I'll often use a prescription drop. That's a combination of an antibiotic and a steroid that kind of quickly get rid of the irritation and inner ear infection. At home treatments, uh, a, a little dropper bottle of half vinegar and half rubbing alcohol is great for both treatment and prevention. And as a competitive swimmer, I would just make a little bottle and take that with you. On your way home when from you get out of your the workout, pool, just put, put a few drops in. in there and that will dry out all the water in there. Okay, and, and her coach also said blow dryer? You know, be careful with that. If you're going to use a blow dryer, make sure you stay at least a foot away. They do make actual, low setting. yeah, low setting. Yeah. They do make actual, very low pressure ear dryers if you really want to go that route. But usually, just kind of a good shake and some of the vinegar or uh, alcohol drops. Do but for anyone well. watching out there, I just have to add this word of caution. I'm not saying you're at risk, but there is such a thing as malignant otitis externa, and that is most common in folks who are immunocompromised, have diabetes. But once that ear canal gets irritated, you have to give it a chance to heal because if it doesn't ever heal, it's almost like pouring salt into a wound each and every day. So until that area heals, once it's healed up, then you can move to the preventative measures. But the last thing you want is for it to just become a chronic long-term right. infection. And your advice on the vinegar rubbing alcohol mm -hmm. solutions. Make yourself a little potion. That well. Make a little, I think little it's drop a bottle. Yeah. 